John Mouse Goes to Work by Roger Hargreaves Good morning! In the nice cosy kitchen of Apple Tree Cottage, Ginger the Cat, who lives there, was enjoying his breakfast. In between each mouthful he purred with pleasure. Munch! 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 Ginger enjoyed his breakfasts. And in the dining room of Apple Tree Cottage, Mr. Simpkin, who lives there too, was enjoying his breakfast. In between each mouthful, he said, Mmm, munch, mmm, munch, mmm, munch. Mr. Simpkin enjoyed his breakfasts. Now, if you look carefully at the dining room wall behind Mr. Simpkin, you may see something. Can you see it? Yes, you can. Under the picture, a small door. Because behind that small door, somebody else was enjoying their breakfast too. John Mouse and Sophie Mouse and Amelia Mouse, who are John Mouse's twin sisters, and Mr. and Mrs. Mouse, and Grandpa Mouse, the whole Mouse family, all enjoying their breakfast. Munch, squeak, munch, squeak, munch. After breakfast, John Mouse decided to slip out through that small front door of his and see what was going on. He opened the door, looked around carefully. You can't be too careful when you live in the same house as Ginger the cat. And went out into Mr. Simpkins's dining room. Mr. Simpkin was still enjoying his breakfast. Munch! Mmm! Munch! Mmm! Munch! John Mouse scampered across the carpet, right past Mr. Simpkins's feet, and into the hall. In the hall, John Mouse saw something on the table, big and round and black. It was Mr. Simpkins's bowler hat. John Mouse thought it would be rather fun to play with. So he climbed up a chair leg, and onto the chair, and up the table leg, and onto the table, and jumped up onto the bowler hat. He was running round and round the brim of the hat when he heard Mr. Simpkin coming out of the dining room. Oh dear! He squeaked to himself and hid inside the hat. Now, what John Mouse didn't know was that this was a day for Mr. Simpkin to go to work. And another thing John Mouse didn't know was that when Mr. Simpkin went to work, he always took his briefcase and his coat and his umbrella and something else as well. Can you guess what? Yes, you can. His bowler hat. Mr. Simpkin picked up his bowler hat and put it on with John Mouse inside. Then Mr. Simpkin went to work. Mr. Simpkin walked into his office. Good morning, Miss Smith, he said to his secretary. Good morning, Mr. Simpkin, his secretary replied. Mr. Simpkin put his briefcase on his desk. He put his umbrella in the umbrella stand. He took off his coat and hung it up. Then he took off his bowler hat and hung that up too, on a hat stand. John Mouse breathed a sigh of relief and peeped out. 
Once John Mouse had got used to the idea that he wasn't in Apple Tree Cottage, but in the city, in an office, he thought it was quite fun. Without Mr. Simpkin seeing him, he climbed down the hat stand and went off on an explore. But wherever he went, he got up to a lot of mischief. When Miss Smith, Mr. Simpkins's secretary, wasn't looking, he danced on her typewriter. When Miss Smith took the letter for Mr. Simpkin to sign, it was full of mistakes. Mr. Simpkin was rather cross. Poor Miss Smith just couldn't explain the mistakes. John Mouse, peeping through the door, chuckled a little mousy chuckle. It was fun in an office. Then he went on another explore. And this time he found a telephone. He lifted up the telephone receiver and dialed a number. The telephone rang in Mr. Simpkins's office. Miss Smith, who was just leaving the office, came back to answer the telephone. Mr. Simpkins's office, she said into the telephone. Squeak! squeaked John Mouse. Squeak! Squeak! Miss Smith's glasses fell off the end of her nose. Oh, Mr. Simpkin! she said. It sounds like a mouse. A what? said Mr. Simpkin. A mouse! replied Miss Smith. Really, Miss Smith? Mr. Simpkin said sternly. What is wrong with you this morning? Poor Miss Smith. John Mouse, listening at the other end of the telephone, chuckled an even mousier chuckle and grinned a particularly mousy grin. And all day he caused poor Miss Smith so much trouble she didn't know whether she was coming or going. One thing John Mouse did was to tie her typewriter ribbon up in knots. Another thing John Mouse did was he knocked over a bottle of red ink and left little mousy footprints, or rather paw prints, all over Miss Smith's office. He also nibbled a hole in an envelope. He also joined all her paper clips together. He also bit the end of her pencil. So she sharpened it. But when she wasn't looking, John Mouse bit it off again. Poor Miss Smith. Naughty John Mouse. Then John Mouse hid in the bowler hat again because he knew Mr. Simpkin would be going home soon. Mr. Simpkin shut his briefcase, put on his coat, picked up his umbrella and put on his hat, with you-know-who inside. Good night, Miss Smith, he said. Inside the darkness of the bowler hat, John Mouse couldn't help squeaking a squeaky giggle. A mouse! exclaimed Miss Smith. I heard another mouse! Really, Miss Smith! snorted Mr. Simpkin, and went off home in not the very best of tempers. The Mouse family had been worried about John Mouse. But now they laughed when he told them all about his adventures in the city. And Mr. Simpkin, sitting in his dining room eating his dinner, could just hear that squeaky laughter coming out from that small door underneath the picture. That's funny, he thought to himself. Even I'm imagining I can hear mice now. What nonsense! And he ate another spoonful of pudding. Munch! Mmm! Munch! Mmm! Munch! And that's the end of this John Mouse story. Thank you for listening.